What's up everyone? Um, today I'm just gonna give an overview of this little device that I've built. It's a Raspberry Pi Super Game Boy 64 Extreme whatever. So, um, it's a Game Boy with a little modification. This, this particular Game Boy died. Um, battery had leaked. I had bought it from Goodwill for five bucks and thought I could salvage it, but um, instead I salvaged it a different way and actually built something into it. So let's go ahead and fire it up. Um, the device was built using a Raspberry Pi um, computer and has a bunch of emulators and can actually run the Raspbian or um, some other um, operating systems. It's based on an ARM processor so um, let's go ahead and fire it up. So to power this I've got an external USB battery, runs at 5 volt, 100, or I'm sorry, 1000 milliamp hours. Um, put in a micro USB port on the bottom. So when you plug it in, it still retains its power button from the original Game Boy. And let's start it up. So. takes a few seconds to load. Um, it does use RetroPie, which is a custom-built emulation station, or custom-built group of programs that house, or store, or use multiple emulators. Um, the front end is called Emulation Station, and yeah, so here's the various emulators I've got loaded on it. Of course, we've got Doom. Yes, it can run Doom. It's got the Game Boy, of course. It's got Game Boy Advance, Game Gear, Nintendo, the original NES, Turbo Graphics 16 or PC Engine, the Sega Master System, and then the controls for it. So let's start by going through some of these to demo them. So here's Doom. Um, did retain the original Game Boy speaker, so that's what you're hearing there. So here's Doom. Um, strafe used with that button, so as we run around, fires. I double map the open door function to the fire button so any actions are done that way so yeah there's doom so to exit any emulators I mapped it to the select button um, let's fire up some a Game Boy game um, the other thing I did add was some back buttons um, for some Game Boy Advance games um, but in the emulation station they're used for paging up and paging down so makes it handy to get through the various ROMs. So let's fire up one of my favorites. Super Mario Land 2. So all buttons are retained there. As you can see, start. So all these are functional. The controls are actually pretty simple. Um, there's a site on the internet called Kitchbent which sells um, DMG parts for the original Game Boy for modding. Uh, most of these are for DJ stations and that, but um, they have a nice control PCB board which fits the Game Boy perfectly and um, has different ports for soldering your pins and your wires too and a common ground so that way you don't have to use a ground for every single button it's just one single um, ground for everything so um, so let's go through and here's Turbo Express or Turbo Graphic 16 I used to have a Turbo Express and got rid of it, which was a huge mistake. 
years ago there was something more that I thought I wanted and I always regretted that so now I pretty much have the Turbo Express back again so that's great <laughs> but yep here's Bog's Adventure 2 Master System. Um, it was a good system for its time, I thought. I mean, unfortunately, it came out the same time as the NES, so let's just pick the game. Um, so it kind of got overshadowed by that. But now I can play all of the Master System stuff on my Game Boy thingy. Um, I decided to go with an external battery only because. Um, Space was an issue. I mean, the Game Boy is not very big, obviously, and the Raspberry Pi plus the screen take up most of the internal space for this, so. Um, plus, with an external battery, I mean, I play mostly at home, so an external battery doesn't really affect me. I can always plug it into a 5 volt phone charger if I need to, um, which was nice. And plus, I didn't have to worry about having a charging board, or a LiPo charging board, as well as a up, up or down um, volt regulator. So, that worked out best. And plus, if this ever dies, just run out and get a new one. So, so here's the master system. I do plan on adding some more emulators, given that I have a couple extra buttons, so I do want to add some... Mega Drive or Genesis ones, as well as even the Super Nintendo for those that only use the front buttons plus shoulders. Um, but um, this does run a full version of Raspbian behind the scenes, so technically, oh, that was great. Technically, I can run um, a desktop environment, but you really want to want wouldn't want to do that on this, so. Anyways, getting to the specs, um, again, it's got a um, Raspberry Pi Model B. It's the 512 meg version. It's running at 700 megahertz. Um, that's integrated towards the back here. You can kind of see the top slot of the Raspberry Pi right there. I did get a smaller SD card, um, micro SD card holder, which you can see there. Power, um, I used a micro USB and modified it to take away the shielding and then wired it straight into the shielding to save some space. So, and here's what I was saying about the modified version it uses an MMMC, MMC card, um, and then it's, it's a smaller SD card profile. You can get those off of eBay, which is what I did. The back, I added two buttons for sh left and right, and those are all wired in. Um, all the controls are wired through the Raspberry Pi's GPIO ports. I mapped out the GPIO ports um, for various functions, and then initially I had longer wires that plugged in, but given the height of those wires and the connectors, they didn't work, so I decided to solder them in. That was a mistake. <laughs> Soldering and then trying to reopen and fix things was a nightmare. So I recommend if you are going to build one and you do want to connect to the GPIO, get one of those special GPIO adapters. So um, the other thing is the screen. It's a 3.5 inch backup camera screen. Um, you can get those off of Amazon. Putting it in initially, I had put it into landscape mode. So trying to retain the original size of the Game Boy screen. Well, that didn't work. Um, I couldn't ever get the emulation station or the emulators to run well with that portrait si or with that portrait layout. So I ended up opting having to go with a landscape layout. And given that, well, why not bump the screen size up? So using a Dremel, I trimmed out most of the Game Boy window, the original Game Boy window, and then um, used black... Um, black wiring tape, what do you call it, uh, electrical tape, sorry, um, to, to border the frame so you wouldn't see the silver. So once that was done, the next step was to mount the, the board into the actual Game Boy for the controller 
um, for the LA, L, 